exactly five years ago, we had some life altering events that changed our outlook on life forever. We had the realization that the future isn't guaranteed, that we may not have the time to do all those things we've dreamt of doing. So we took the decision to live life to its fullest right now. We have made it to the Arctic Ocean. And that's how we ended up here in Baja, Mexico, as we drive our van, the circumference of the planet. And if all goes according to plan today, we'll get to see and do something else on our bucket list. One day your life will flash before your eyes. Make sure it's worth watching. The Bucket List. Okay, so we're leaving the beach. We're excited to explore uh, more of Baja and even more importantly, we're excited to uh, tick off something on our bucket list. One thing about this coastal road of Baja is it is seriously, seriously windy. You can see it on the, uh, on the palm trees up there. In fact, I had a bit of an accident with the door. On Chris's side of the van, the wind took the door and it ripped crunched. it open. And when I closed it, it made a really loud clacking sound. So when we get to our next destination, I have to see if I can find a mechanic. So on the drive to uh, Todos Santos, we stopped in the town of El Trunfo, up here in the mountains here in Baja. And uh, we've just spotted this really cool looking restaurant. And it's pretty busy. El Maison de Carlota. El Maison de Carlota. Good job. Yeah, mate. Dos personas. I've got beef fajitas with a beautiful guacamole and some sauce that looks very terrifying, so I'll get Chris to check it first. Beans. Is it beans? Beans. I don't like beans. <laughs> and I got this soup with like chicken and everything. It looks absolutely beans. delicious. Oh, is what is that, guacamole? Mmm. It's like a meaty stew, thick sauce with chicken, avocado, and uh, like bits of tortilla. This restaurant that we've come into is actually family owned and uh, it's owned by Romeo Romero here. Hola. This is a traditional dessert from Baja. Queso, muy, muy blandito, muy... It's like a relaxed cheese. Yeah, it's a yeah. relaxed cheese. I feel very relaxed here. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's a, it's a candy of the of the cane. Ah, uh, sugar cane. Yes, yeah, sugar cane. Uh, this is very very special. This the is name, traditional from Baja. Yeah, the name is Panocha de Gajo. When when you eat that, you need eat like a sandwich. One of each. Yeah. Oh, is it good? It's very sweet. <laughs> hey, <laughs> she's oh. taking all of it. <laughs> oh, the sweetness of the sugar cane and the oranges coming through and then the freshness of the white cheese. So it's actually Romero's wife in the kitchen and uh, they have a traditional oven here. In this part, we make the magic, okay? Oh, look at this. Wow. That is the Talega of coffee. It's a special filter for the coffee. Oh, I'm loving that. Look at that. Yeah. It's the Talega, important for the culture of Baja. Amazing. All the water, warm water for the coffee. Yeah. And then look, you can see this uh, is all heated by the, the wood fire underneath. Very traditional. Yeah. The fire is important for the all the plants and the stoop. Uh, 
This is an amazing kitchen. She is a pilar. Is the boss for the traditional cuisine. Ah, uh, she's in charge of the stove. Yeah. Good. This is amazing. Tamales. Tamales. Is yeah. Traditional. Tamal de rancho. Ranch. Yeah. Ranch made tamales. Yeah. Okay? And this is pozole. Pozole, a pork beef with a, a corn and something. No? Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And, and cheese. Juliet. Is this your wife? Yeah. Ah, Juliet. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then they got the other kitchen. <laughs> Look at that. Tortillas and then you fry. All homemade. Amazing. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Gracias. <laughs> that was the most delicious Mexican food I have had so far. That's a big statement, isn't it? That's a very but the, big statement. The family there were absolutely lovely. I love the wood-fired oven. And uh, if you're definitely, if you're driving from La Paz south, pop in and, uh, and have some lunch. Amazing. So we've come down into the town of Triunfo. It's a very small, cute little village, really. Back in the day, it was originally a mining town and uh, became famous for silver and gold mining. In 1878, the British El Progreso Mining Company took over the mine here in the town and the town prospered. In fact, back in its heyday, it had a population of over 10,000 people. So much so that it was actually the largest town here in Baja, California Sur. Nowadays, it's a lovely, quiet little village uh, located about an hour south of uh, La Paz. You can see the, uh, the chimneys here, the remnants of the days gone by. It's become one of the main uh, places for people to stop off between La Paz whilst they're heading down south. And uh, it's just really nice. Cobbled little streets, nice architecture, a really relaxed sort of atmosphere. In the rainy season, this would be a gushing river, but at the moment it just looks like a footpath. And you can see on the pavement, all these holes is where the water would run off and, and go down. And look at the local church, I just love the architecture of the churches here. This takes me back to Central America every time I see these churches. What a lovely little town. Lovely flowers going down these little side roads and just the buildings and the noisy chickens. I just love it. It's just a very cool place. <laughs> We've had so much fun today. Where does the time go? It's actually coming up to evening and the sun started to go down. So rather than uh, bomb, trying to bomb to Todos Santos now um, and not know where we're going to sleep, we just decided we're going to park here and go in the morning. Oh. So talking about bucket lists this morning, it's made me reflect on how important these life moments are. And I wanted to just share a story um, that happened to me many years ago. I used to work in a five-star hotel in London and uh, one of the guests very kindly gave me a bottle of vintage Dom Perignon champagne as a thank you for my superb service. I saved it for that special occasion. The days, the weeks, the months went past. It's interesting. There never seemed to be a moment that was special enough 
to drink this 150 pound bottle of champagne. And because it was so expensive, I didn't want to just drink it at the weekend for the sake of drinking it. And the years went by and uh, there was a moment when uh, about 10 years ago, Marianne had a health scare and found a, they found a shadow on an x-ray in her lung. It was a very stressful moment. We didn't tell the kids. It was just one of those moments that we, we went through Christmas not knowing the results, having to wait. So we eventually got the results and uh, Marianne didn't have lung cancer, thank God. But the shadow on her lung was just a bit of calcium, a calcium deposit. But we figured that was a moment. We celebrated, we were so happy that we reached finally for that bottle of champagne. And when we opened it, it actually been corked. It was off. We'd kept it too long. And uh, I guess the moral of the story is, if I get a bottle of champagne now, I'm gonna drink it. I'm gonna drink it almost there and then because you never know what tomorrow holds. And if you save onto these things for that special occasion, that special moment, it may never come. So we had a, uh, a good night's sleep here in the town. A few little dogs barking during the night, woke up to the sound of chickens. But apart from that, it was perfect on this quiet little road here in, uh, in the town. They even put a little step for us right, That's very right nice there. Of them. Although, <laughs> I have to say, as a homeowner on wheels, the dust and the sand in the van is driving me crazy again. Today uh, we are going to Todos Santos and uh, we've got to go and get our door checked because as we said yesterday, the wind took the door um, when we opened it to put the solar out in um, Cabo Pulmo and we can't actually open the door anymore. I'm not even going to try because the hinge has kind of like moved and it's very crunchy. So we figured probably the first starting point is probably best in case we need to order parts is just go and see a garage on the way. And we also need to try and do an oil change. So that's the first stop today. Okay, so Marianne's just got one of the guys to come and have a look. So we bolted the door here. Um, but all that. Oh, it's muy difícil. Oh, prende el puerto. Uh huh. The wind. Yo necesito. Eso. Sí. Venga, aquí da. So now we're just seeing if he's got the oil. Five. So the problem we're having with Trudy in Mexico is that they don't have the right type of oil. We need 10W40 or 5W40 for a diesel and they just don't seem to have it. This is... Uh, um, the third or fourth place we've tried whilst we've been in Mexico. So if it doesn't work, they're just making some phone calls. Uh, if not, we will have to go uh, to La Paz. Okay, so that's perfect. So uh, we're booked in on Friday, uh, later in the week to have the oil done. And what they've actually figured out is the door here is rubbing on the bottom there just here so somehow the door dropped so we need to go to a body shop <laughs> got the young guys riding around on the horses I'm loving that so we've all parked up welcome to Todos Santos it's uh, located pretty well halfway between 
La Paz and Cabo San Lucas. But Todos Santos is a much quieter little town. You definitely got to have your wits around you walking around talking to a camera in this town because there is steps <laughs> that sneak up on you everywhere. <laughs> We've spotted this little street stand and there was a queue earlier, so it's busy with the locals. So I thought we'd go and eat some little street food here. <laughs> it looks good. Super good. Super good. Delicious. She's dipped the tortillas in oil, heated the meat up, a little bit of cheese, frying the cheese. Oh yeah, puts the tortillas on top of the cheese. <laughs> it's good. So what have we got there? There's got some onions, onions and coriander. Oh. I cannot tell you the smell coming from this That's meat. Amazing. It's lovely. And that looks like a spicy sauce. Oh, okay. Es picante? Si. Sí. I'm going to try a bit of chili on one. Oh. Picante. 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 So it's like a double double tortilla with cheese. Oh, look at that cheese! Oh my goodness, how good does this look? Mm. That pork is just so tender. It just falls apart. We've got nice coriander, melted cheese, the fried tortillas in a lovely oily flavoursome sauce it's probably not that healthy for you but boy does it taste delicious and so many people that travel are nervous to come to these sort of street stands you know they go to restaurants and stuff you get the best food coming to these street stands just look for where the queue is <laughs> he's putting his thumb up behind me <laughs> there's the queue there's always a queue there's always here. a queue and uh the food the food here is absolutely delicious and both of these was only 90 pesos okay. muchas gracias bye bye thank you bye mucho gusto that was absolutely delicious Todos Santos was established back in 1723, originally as a mission and later became a massive sugarcane producer. Nowadays, it's a haven for artists, craftsmen and travelers. It's much quieter here. Really, it's Baja's little secret. There's no big resorts here. It's more relaxed and got that more boho vibe. Now that's what I call a magnificent looking building. This building here is completely covered with plants. Look at that, it's like a living building. Inside they've got all these different shops, an oyster bar. Very cool looking building. Very classy. Hola! <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> always guaranteed, always guaranteed a big smile, that's for sure. I just love all the, uh, the colourful buildings, the palm trees all the way down the road. And uh, it's just a really nice place. High-end clothes shops, like... <laughs> I like high-end clothes. <laughs> I don't have any high-end clothes, but, but they're like nice. The shops. <laughs> Absolutely. We just spotted this little uh, market and this wonderful picture on the wall. Look at this place. Save water, drink wine. <clears throat> oh, I like that. I think that might. There's be logic one. there, but it's just uh, lots of uh, souvenirs and clothes. Yeah, it's a very nice town. You will notice that the hotel behind me is the Hotel California. 
a name famous from the Eagles song, but lead singer Don Healy said that this wasn't his inspiration for writing this song. But nevertheless, it's still a very cool hotel that lots of people take pictures with. Ah, oh, so they got this stand here, look, take a chance, share a thought, and they got little tags that you can hang on the tree. It's like a wishing tree. I actually put two on. I put one on either side, so they've got a double whammy from Tread the Globe. <laughs> So we spotted, spotted this little place, Nevera La Palma ice cream. So we thought we'd finish with a little cheeky naughty ice cream. Apparently this place makes all of the ice creams on site and they have over 30 types. <laughs> oh, wow. oh wow, look. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so I got passion fruit. Marianne got Snickers ice cream, but I just want to just do a size comparison there because somehow she managed to order a bigger size. <laughs> well, my theory was is this is passion fruit. We've never had that before. So I thought we may not like it. And I knew you would want some of mine. Oh, uh, you're a good one. What is your favorite flavor of ice cream? And are you adventurous or do you stick to the normal stuff? They do actually have flavors such as Beer, tequila, avocado, cactus fruit. The uh, the guy said that the passion fruit was the most popular. That is good. Oh, I know. I may not share. I'm thinking, as so many people think that Trudy is an ice cream van, we should get some takeout. <laughs> what, what, what do you think? <laughs> Well, we've had a fabulous day walking around Todos Santos today, but we've come down to the beach here, just north of Todos Santos. I'm going to try and say it properly. It's Tortugueras de la Playa. There you go. <laughs> and the, uh, the reason that we've come down to this beach is actually one of the main reasons that we've actually come to Mexico and to Todos Santos because there's something very special about to happen on this beach. Something that has been on our bucket list to see forever for a very long time. And it may actually surprise you. Oh, wow. wow. Oh my goodness. Look at this. This is what you call a beach. My goodness. Look at the view here with these sand dunes, blue waters, rolling waves and the sun is just going down. Somebody's just shouted there's a whale. Oh really? A what whale? There's pelicans flying there. Unbelievable. <laughs> but looking at this structure, this shows we're in the right place. Isn't this just a magical spot here in Mexico? It actually really makes me feel like it's so important to just live and embrace these moments. The reason we've come down to this beach is uh, there's a turtle hatchery here and they're gonna be getting wet feet. Look at that. <laughs> I love it. They're gonna be um, releasing baby turtles into the wonderful ocean in about half an hour if all goes according to plan. So if you've been following us for a while, you will know that we actually funded a turtle rescue center in Turkey, Dekafok. If you haven't, you should definitely check out the videos. It's a beautiful story. In fact, you funded Dekafok. <laughs> you did, you all funded it. <laughs> um, 
but yeah absolutely amazing and after all this time of having the turtle center in turkey we visited our friends one in borneo we have never actually seen a baby turtle our timing has always been off so i hope hopefully today we can uh, reverse that Oh, wow. Look, this is the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here down at the beach and uh, the guys have prepped the buckets with the turtles. These are actually Olive Ridley turtles. They're juveniles. They were hatched out today. Look at these babies. The problems that they face are the lack of turtles coming back to nest because they're getting injured by the boats, they're getting injured by entanglements, and uh, generally, like all species, they're struggling to be able to breed and reach sexual maturity to be able to come to the beaches and lay. And of course, out of a thousand eggs that hatch out, a thousand baby juveniles, only one will survive. So each and every baby turtle is such a precious gift. So we've managed to come in. We've come in with Thomas, Thank who you, Thomas. is the son of uh, Francesca, the one that runs the centre here. So you can see them actually digging and you wonder why are they digging? This nest has been hatching for three days or more. All of the turtles have been released, but they just check to make sure there's normally one or two stragglers that won't make it out. And we can see they've managed to get a few that would have died if they hadn't have dug them out. So they're doing a fabulous job. There you go, you saved quite a few yes. tonight. Oh, look, at look. That. little baby Olive Ridleys. And these guys, like so many organizations, are completely self funded by donations. So if you do come to Todos Santos, go online, you can donate through PayPal, come down, and you too can experience this wonderful moment. How amazing is this? We are going to see baby turtles. We are. Incredible, you can actually feel the magic in the air, can't you? Oh, it's amazing. We realize that experiencing these special moments, they create memories, meaningful memories, that will last our lifetimes. And we're gonna start, but when we go to Japan, we're gonna create a list of those wonderful things that we have to do and experience whilst we're there. So if any of you have any comments or suggestions of things we should be seeing when we go to Japan, please pop them in the comments below. And if you have a bucket list, We'd love to hear what's on it. Because in the end, you won't remember the time you spent working in the office or mowing the lawn. Climb that goddamn mountain, Jack Kurak.